Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've joined us this morning. This is World Communion Sunday. So churches all over the world will be celebrating communion together. We'll be celebrating the sacrament later in the service, and we invite you to get bread and juice so that you can celebrate with us. In Christ's love, there is no east, no west, no north, no south, but only one spirit of hope, love, and peace for all. Come, let us worship our living God. Let us join in our prayer of confession. God of true peace, we confess that we have preferred the peace the world gives over that which you offer. Forgive us and deepen our trust in you that we may give ourselves to the adventure of living in faith. Make us responsive and responsible to your Holy Spirit through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. May the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. Peace to everybody. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everyone. How do we know what God is like? How do you know? It doesn't get any more basic than that. And if we can't answer that question, we can't go any further. So how do you know what God is like? How do you know? Well, in our Bible lesson for today from the letter to the Hebrews, it says this really exciting thing. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. How do you know? God spoke. We know not because we managed to figure it out on our own, like one plus one equals two, but we know because God has told us. We learn what God is like by listening to what God has spoken. Like when God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai. Like when God spoke to Jonah and told him to go to Nineveh. Like when God spoke to Isaiah and inspired him to prophesy, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. We know what God is like because God has spoken. 
in the Bible, we hear what God spoke. In these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. We know what God is like because we know Jesus. We know what God is like every time we remember Christmas. We know what God is like every time we remember Good Friday. We know what God is like every time we remember Easter. We know what God is like because we know Jesus. And the really good news is we don't just know what God is like, we know God. Because God has given himself to us in Jesus. Jesus gives himself to you today. And that is wonderful news. Amen. Loving and gracious God, thank you for giving us yourself. Thank you for speaking to us and letting us know who you are and how you love us and have saved us in your son, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is from Psalm 8, verses 3 to 6. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I heard about a pastor once who took the Bible out of the sanctuary because he said they were a unique people in a unique time and they'd be better off without that book confusing them. As you might imagine, that did not work out very well. I heard something maybe even more disturbing than that this week that I don't think I ever knew before. Did you know that slaveholders in this country produced a Bible that left out the prophets and the inaugural sayings of Jesus when he quoted the prophet Isaiah and said he was here to bring good news to the poor? Why would they do that? Well, I don't know how they justified it, but it seems clear that their desire was to obscure the character of God, to leave out the justice seeking and lifting up of oppressed peoples and make the imprint of God in Jesus look more like them. We haven't gone so far as to move the Bibles away or physically edit out the parts that make us uncomfortable, but I wonder, do we forget to put the full Christ at the center of our story? That's what scholars think was going on in the time of the writing of the book of Hebrews. The people needed to be reminded who God is, who Jesus is. There are now and there always have been so many distractions, so many other things we need to do before we get around to remembering to notice that God is at work in the world. So the writer of Hebrews interrupts our agenda by drawing our attention to who Jesus is. This sentence from the writers of Hebrews, it is a poetic masterpiece. Who is Jesus? He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. The writer is calling the people of his day back, back to awe, back to understanding, back to being the humans God created us to be. Psalm 8 reminds us about that too, how amazing it is that God chose to create us, chose to trust us as part of the way of making the world work. What does our world need to be called back to today? I was talking to someone about how when the pandemic started last March, most of us thought it wouldn't be long. Even those of us who knew about the pandemic of 1918 were not worried because, well, we're so much more advanced. We won't have any trouble getting this under control. But in some ways, it's been our very advancement that has gotten in the way. We believe so much in our own power that we get attached to a theory and trust in that instead of being humble enough to know we don't know it all yet. Listening for the truth we don't know yet. What's more, in the midst of all of our trust in our own power, it turns out that there are more people struggling with anxiety than ever before. Because we've forgotten how to be with other people? Maybe. Because the job market and the debt market are so difficult to crack? Maybe. Because we're afraid of the virus? Yes, maybe that too. What if we back up? What if we back up and remember that in Jesus, we have a reflection of God's glory and an exact imprint of God's very being? What does that mean to us? Who is Jesus? Really, how would you answer that question? Who is Jesus? If you were writing an epistle to people, a letter to people today, what would you say? Would you start with who Jesus is to you? 
or maybe repeat your favorite parable to explain who Jesus is or sing a song. Would you use verbs? Tell your reader what Jesus does. Jesus heals, Jesus teaches, Jesus loves, Jesus redeems, Jesus saves. Putting Jesus back at the center of our hearts and minds matters to us and matters to God. It helps us to know that we are not in this alone, that we can take our worry and our anxiety and bring it to God. Not in denial of what is, but in trust that there is more to life than we can possibly understand at any given moment. In belief that what Jesus shows us about who God is, is exactly the God we've been seeking all along. It's World Communion Sunday. I love the image in my mind of people all over the world sharing something today over time and space in our houses or in church, homemade bread or wafers. In all times, in all ways, the body and blood of Christ is not limited by our imagination, but lives and breathes in the center of all that we are. Jesus, the exact imprint of God's very being. In his name, amen. Jesus says, come to me, all ye that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Holy God, we praise you and give you thanks for the gift of your creation. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life. We give you thanks for the bread and the cup. Wherever we are this morning, may we be united in this meal, united in the body of Christ to proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. May we hear the words of institution, words meant for each of us and for all of us as we share together in this meal. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. Or Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. May the bread and the cup that we have before us this day truly be a meal of communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, 
inspire us to love. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken in love of us. The cup of the new covenant, Christ's blood poured out in love of us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may all who have shared this day be so nurtured and nourished by the meal you have provided that they may be strengthened to love and serve you. Amen. Amen. Now let us go forward from this place, certain in our knowledge of the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. No.